right. Now, this will tell us. And that's pretty conclusive. Still going. Close. I think he's got it down. How strong is he? Welcome back to the Pick and Go podcast. Uh, we're back again, Pity. Uh, and, well, the listeners won't know, but you're 20 minutes late. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. You had to, and I've got proof. Well, I've got a witness. Where? Well, that's good because it's a good way to bring in our uh, other <laughs> guest who's been on the show before, um, a good friend of the show, former All Black. Uh, now Sky commentator and um, budding coach with the uh, well up in the what is it the the north of the Harbour Bridge College thing? Oh, Westlake Westlake second fifteen fourth coach technical advisor when things aren't going well never never to be seen doesn't do any interviews does nothing a perfect <laughs> role for any coach not like Peter who's up as front and centre you know he's the star of the show uh, hang on. Uh, what? I've seen that exact uh, position before when Goldie was coaching us. Oh, that's and right. The exact same thing. And then when we started, when he come out of the woodwork. <laughs> <Out of, I, laughs> here I am. Look at oh. me. <laughs> well, I had the privilege of coaching uh, Pity at the Blues for my one season I was involved, and neither of us were required the following year. So that's exactly, exactly how well that year went. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I just want to know, Goldie, um, were there any forfeits or punishments for guys who turned up late to training or who turned up late to the bus or something? Did, oh. did you actually have like a kangaroo court or did you have something that they had to do? Well, it was, it was make your own way to training or the airport. What was was that's what happened. Like the bus just left. There was no waiting. If you missed it, you're out. You're done. I mean, I love those, you know. And then I must admit, though, that. Yeah, you only ever you did it once, eh, Pity? When you're in a team, you generally only did it once. And if you did it twice, you never got a third your third strike and you were gone. But if you did it once, because the whole team gets punished, right? And we've been punished already, Paul. We've got probably important things we need to do today. Things we need to get done. But we've waited. We've been patient. But I won't lie, I wasn't surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you've uh, worked together on coming up with a... Uh... Well, Thing to just so that you can give it to the uh, punters that I was late. Well, oh, no, this is just uh, something I, I guess I, I've always wondered about. Like, what happens? Don't lie, oh, Polly. <laughs> Here we go. I reckon we could run a book on it every week. <laughs> the oh. odds, you'd <laughs> you'd be losing, okay. bleedy. <laughs> all, all I can say is at least this is going and functioning really well. Usually it takes Paulie about 15 minutes oh. to sort out how to get this all moving, the yeah. mics going. <laughs> Bloody hell, recording it, everything. Technical so issue. Yeah. Anyway. Constantly. <laughs> right. Well, well, let's get weather, into it. What do I call it? Weather fade. I call it weather fade. That's all you do at Sky. You know, it's atmospheric conditions. They just, that's <laughs> what's coming. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, boy, the weather came in yesterday oh, uh, yeah. here in what You could actually see the dark clouds coming right across the bay. And um, I think a few, it, it wasn't pretty. We were out. Why no? No, I was at uh, Auckland Air Stadium, and the it was hitting hitting the roof really loud. And the kids, all the because I was catching my son's basketball, all the kids like, <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> Bloody hell! That's why we love basketball, eh? She's inside. Yeah. She's inside. Exactly. You sure those dark like, clouds weren't from Saturday? Those, those, dark, those, those dark clouds started on Saturday night, right? About nine, about nine fifteen. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, let, let's get to that then. Um, question this week: um, Are the All Blacks cursed down here at the Tinny House? You got to, you got to explain what the Tinny House is. Goldie hasn't heard your new uh, saying for the Cacton. Oh, oh yeah. Well, his new well, nickname for them. Well, well it's, it's, it's where people go to get a wee bit of a sporting high, and um, unfortunately. Um, well, there were a few that got uh, a sporting high on the weekend. They were dressed in blue and white. Um, and it, it was great to see after the game, the Argentinian team come over and uh, celebrate with their uh, fans. But in terms of the All Blacks, they really do struggle uh, down here in Wellington, Jeff. 
Oh, it's, it's, it's an interesting one, right? Because, you know, there's been so many significant test matches that have been played in Wellington, right? And, and it's one of our premier stadiums. Um, I would say this, uh, even to work there, when you wake up in the morning and you pull the curtains back, you're always wondering what you're going to get, right? And it's not, I, I definitely don't think it's a comfortable place to play. And I remember it in some ways, I got used to it in Dunedin. And I'm sure if you're a Hurricanes player, you got used to it in Wellington, the fact that conditions can play a massive part in the game. So you can do all the prep you want during the week. All of a sudden, are you expecting what we got on Saturday night, which was perfect rugby conditions in Wellington in the, in the you know the back end of winter, you know, and it was perfect, right? And I'm wondering whether or not, as you're preparing and going in, and you think you've got a game plan and you prepare for things pretty, that all of a sudden don't eventuate, and you don't play territory game. You don't use the wind in any way, shape, or fact, um, in fact, because it wasn't there. And so I don't know. I don't know what it is. Um, you know, we've had. Like you say, a, a, a Lions test, which had a red card to Sonny Bill Williams. We had a an Irish test, which was a deciding test in a series against arguably what was the number one team in the world. So, and we've, I think we've, South Africa have taken our scalps there as well in, in the last moments of a test match. So, circumstances have sort of played out that there have been big test matches where the opposition have clearly been up for it. And, you know, Argentina are up for it again. And I just think all of a sudden, you know, when sometimes you think, I don't know what I'm going to get conditions-wise, how's it going to affect the game, it ended up being a perfect night for rugby. And one team was just a little bit better than the other. Not significantly better, like, in some ways, it's being commentated on, eh, Pity? Just a yeah. little bit better in a critical moment. Hey, how many times did you play for the All Blacks down here, Pity? Oh, a few. And were they positive events or...? I think majority of them, yeah, were were positive events. I mean, everyone got a bit of a high. Uh, well, if I have a look at <laughs> if I have a look at the last what, one, two, three, four, five, six tests down here, um, the All Blacks have lost three, drawn two, and their last win was against the French, I think, back in twenty eighteen. Um, so. Well, as Jeff says, maybe it's it's difficult to prepare for a game down here in Wellington because you're never too sure what sort of conditions you're going to get, and they can change very, very late. And it, I, I guess it's very, very strange to have a night like we had here on Saturday, where it was it was perfect plain uh, weather. Well, Goldie did talk about like the prep. Nothing can prep you for it, but if I know. That majority of the time that when you train, you're training during the day. You're not training uh, in the conditions at night time, uh, especially with test rugby here. Uh, and the temperature actually drops quite a bit uh, at night than it does during the day. So, you know, there's, there is the, uh, that factor that when you go go out and, like, like most players do, they walk around just to check the, uh, the playing uh, field and, and uh, see if there was a bit of wind and if there's a bit of dew or anything like that. But it's when you walk out of the bus, go into the change room, and then come out onto the field. That that's when it hits you. Like you think it's going all right, but it's it, it's got that little bite to it. With uh down here, um, that's pretty similar to to uh down being down in Dunedin and in, in Christchurch. Like uh, you think it's nice and warm, and then gets to a certain uh, time at night, and the, and the temperature drops, and then there's that little bite. So maybe the you know. Maybe that's something that they need to factor into uh, into some of their preparation during the week down down here in Wellington. Right, let's have a look at that game from Saturday night. Uh, the Argentines uh, are winning that. Los Pumas 38, All Blacks 30. Um, Jeff, if you have a look at overall, you're right. There wasn't a lot between the two teams. Um, I guess if you look at, back at it now, um, what are the major sort of um, I guess takeaways you can uh, get from that first test against Argentina. I think you know hindsight's a wonderful thing, and you know we sort of the week before, as a group of us at Sky, had tried to I suppose warn people that Argentina are dangerous. You know that, that they've got this ability when they decide that they are there mentally and ready to play, and you get the sense with this group, Felipe Contempomi is 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 building a belief in them. Yep, they've always brought passion, but they were the in some ways, this 
the more dangerous and smarter rugby team on the weekend. And that's probably born out of a, a number of things. I think experience played a huge part in this game. I really do. And particularly, we didn't have a lot coming off the bench um, to finish. Uh, yes, Rico Ioane's played a huge number of test matches. But when you start talking Asafa Amua, Josh Lord, uh, Fletcher Newell, yes, he's been in some big games, but there's not a volume of, of matches. Um, and we're used to sort of putting the Pumas away. Uh, they just, we didn't put them away. You know, when we got ourselves on top, you know, we didn't turn that 10-point lead into something a little bit more and we kept presenting them with opportunities. And I won't lie to you, like, um, you know, some of our more experienced players and guys who were outstanding last year aren't on top of their game just yet in 2024. And they're your leaders. You know, they're not impacting the game um, around your younger talent. And, you know, I, I just I, I just looked at their, and we, I think I highlighted before the game, there was five guys, and there was numbers six through ten for them. We felt were really dangerous. Their loose forward trio were really, really good. And um, Carreras, Santiago Carreras, um, was outstanding. And uh, Bertrand, Gonzalo Bertrand, the halfback, really, really good. 60 caps, 45 caps, experienced. They played outstandingly well. Their decision-making was really good. So we just, and when the pressure came on, we presented them with one opportunity on the back of a, a couple of horrific passes. Um, you know, and, and I think everyone's really highlighting those, you know, and saying, well, that's the reason we lost the test match. You've probably got to dig a little bit deeper, uh, deeper than that. But that was the one moment where it brought in their belief, brought in their emotion. We can do this again. We've been here before and they nailed it. And you have to give them credit for that, you know. Um, and I just think that the Scott Robertson, he's probably just hasn't got, if you look across the team that he's sort of named on the weekend, it's probably not a familiar place for him to be when, you, when you're looking at guys who haven't got a huge number of games behind them to fall back on at the level that he's now coaching. Pity, um, TJ Perinata, he got a couple of box kicks charged down. In terms of halfback play, is that down to the halfback or is that down to... He's not getting the sort of uh, I get blocks um, from his teammates, or there was a wee bit of a miscommunication. What's uh, if you look at that? What would you take from that? I, I guess with the box kick, like I just watched. Uh, I didn't watch the whole game. I actually watched highlights of it, and um, I saw. I did actually see when when TJ uh, got charged down. That 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 was purely um, him not being fast through his process not allowing um, the person that's trying to charge him uh, any opportunities. So he probably took maybe one too many steps to, to, to clear. And I know uh, when it comes to box kicking, you don't want to give them any opportunity. So uh, if the ruck's there ready to, and the ball's pre present and you try not to give them opportunities to set their, uh, plant their feet so that they can react to it. Um, but the, that whole process, uh, I saw he took one too many steps uh, than usual. Uh, for a player of his calibre uh, to execute the the box kick that he would that he requires or, or wants to do, but yeah, I think they just got um, put under a lot of pressure that they're not used to so far under this new uh, under um, Razor, and and I think it's for him uh, as a coach, you know, it's um, not trying to I wouldn't say re invent uh, the wheel or anything like that it's about making sure that they just get those all those little processes right um i remember we had a lot of uh little things that we needed to take care of individually uh and, and as long as the the coaches gave us the the blueprint it was up to us to execute uh and not try and go uh beyond uh what's required in, in your role but there was an opportunity for you to have a crack uh, we would always be able to be allowed to express ourselves and have a crack. If it didn't work out, yeah, don't don't do that again. Uh, you know, sort of thing. But yeah, you know, I, I think the whole um, thing around it is it's that's on on a line more than anything. Uh, Jeff, you mentioned that we won a line out near halfway, uh, a couple of wayward passes, sort of thing, and then we find ourselves back behind um, our own goal line. Uh, goal line um, giving away a five-metre scrum to the Argentinians. Uh, and a lot of people have focused on that pass from Damian McKenzie, but uh, they sort of forget that he did the little chip and chase that set up Sam Derry's uh, first try. So overall, 
Um, I well, I personally thought that D Mac um, had a a very good game. Other than the, the that one pass, and you would probably say the 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 missed penalty, which would have taken some momentum away from the Pumas in the second half. He, he played really, really well. But at the moment, when you start looking for for answers, and you, you look at the most contestable positions in a lot of people's eyes, and where things are different from what we saw last year, and clearly first five's different than what we saw last year. So you start focusing on players that who have had the biggest impact on the game. I mean, I, I think what's maybe in some ways a little bit concerning for me is that I'm not sure if we know where our competitive advantage is right now, Pity, uh, Paulie. I, I, that, like the playing to a strength, playing to what is our best way to beat the opposition. And, you know, we, we've spoken heavily about the set piece for probably a good, you know, probably a good 18 months since Jason Ryan's come involved. You know, and even in this year, we talked about our scrum being a weapon, right? Um, only other team that you, the only other teams that used to do that around the world were were not the All Blacks. It was South Africa. It was France. It was England. And and, and rather it being a weapon than rather it being a platform, they're two different things. Platform to launch off a weapon to penalise a, a weapon when you're looking to score points from it. And so, to me, I'm just wondering if we're when you we have a test match, which is unusual, where there was no scrums for 60 minutes, mm-hmm. but something they thought they might be able to use as a competitive advantage ended up not being there. Um, Razor talked about adapting. I'm just, I, I just look at some things and I'm going, what, what is it that we're best at? But if you look at, if you look at it, what Brownie's thrown into South Africa and their selections, you know, Andre Pollard's on the bench because they think they're going to try and expand their game a little bit. They're expanding it all right. Um, what is it that we should be able to fall back into, Putty? I know, Paulie, you asked the, asked the questions, but I've got, that's the question I've got for you guys is what is it that you know, at an international level, what what makes us better? What makes this team better than it was just good enough to beat England? Wasn't good enough to beat Argentina. Dominated Fiji on the back of the fact that forward pack was really good. So I, I'm when I start thinking about playing against the Springboks and then France and then Ireland and then England again at the end of the year, I go, what is it that we'll do better than them which will help us win test matches? Because winning test matches right now is not easy. No. Not at all. Oh, well, I wouldn't even know what the answer to that is, too, uh, Goldie. I mean, it's it's a, it's a hard one because we've always been uh, the ones that are a step ahead of everyone, and it feels like now we're pretty much the ones trying to play catch-up. Even par at best. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, it's a tough one. I, I guess to be fair to Razor, he's trying to instill his style of play uh, into this team and he's only four test matches into his tenure as uh, head coach of the All Blacks so and I know we discussed this before the All Black season started uh, Jeff was on a episode of the pick and go and I think I asked him when does the honeymoon finish and I, I think Jeff said as soon as they lose the test um, yeah, so I'll, I'll throw it back at you. It, is the honeymoon over? Is it like um, now you've got to get really start get, well getting results? I guess exactly because you know um, we know how um, critical and brutal the rugby public are, and but also expectations of the All Black jersey and and its legacy is built on winning. You know, and at no point do you get the luxury of you know. And I've, I've experienced a coach going through it when John Hart went through it in 1998. We all of a sudden we lost five in a row. You know. Um, now I don't imagine that's going to happen here. I don't think that. But like I say, if you start factoring in what the season's going to look like from here on in, and the way other teams are playing, you know, the, the, definitely the honeymoon's over because we've dropped a test match probably a lot more earlier than we would have expected. We wouldn't expect it to drop this test. You know, I think if he'd got to South Africa and we dropped the first one over there, for example. You go up, oh, that's okay. You know, you, there's, this is South Africa, the number one team in the world. We're talking about, you know, World Cup champions. Um, you know, I just think at the moment, uh, you know, I, I think there's a lot of things. He's not just trying to get a game plan in. I think he's trying to get a structure around the team uh, that's different. You know, you've got a lot of people, a lot of coaches, um, a lot of, you know, uh, new people in that environment. Everyone's done, you're still getting to know each other. You don't, and this is when they'll get to know each other. <laughs> Right now, you know, first chat. I mean, I, you know, I, I know, um, 
Katrina Dowry really well, Sam's mum, and she was sitting behind me on the plane coming back um, from uh, the test on Sunday. She was analysing the test. She's a nutritionist. You know, whether she was watching, just watching Sam, uh, watching his try on loop over, loop over uh, one after each other, or whether she was, you know, like all of a sudden that, that they will be their head is down and they're going, what is it that, you know, from a team that was, I reckon, finished last year really strongly, but, but doesn't have a whole lot of experience that we had the luxury of having Aaron Smith and three locks and Scott Barrett's not there. All of these things are now gone. You know, I, I think you're really starting to see the value of Sam Kane, you know, uh, the fact that, you know, but the, I, the much maligned All Black captain, who for me has has been a, a fantastically good captain and leader of the All Blacks. You know, um, what are the, what do you do this week? Because you put some faith in some guys, and they let you down. Do you show faith again? Uh, this is a this is a huge week, not just for their game plan, but for behind the scenes how they respond and react and the cut through they get with the group. Well, pity um, if we look at that test match. Um, and if you look at the All Blacks in particular, um, I guess who were the players that sort of stuck out for you, uh, for mine? Well, obviously, well, now that we know, Sam Derry obviously eats very well, eats very healthily because he play. I thought he had a very, very good game it, it, outside of the try that he scored. Um, I thought his all-round game was very, very good. I thought Anton Leonard-Brown um, looked, um, I thought he looked very, very good in, in the midfield as well. Um, but for yourself, if you look, have a look at the game, um, any sort of performances that stick out for you? Uh, yeah, I'll probably go about about the same with with your decisions with uh, Sam and I thought Anton obviously uh, got his opportunity, um, and obviously they're still working on combinations, uh, especially that in that midfield with uh, with Geordie. Um, so, you know, they're, obviously they've used Rico uh, Proctor. Um, so this might be his only chance to, to um, put a claim uh, to that starting role. So, yeah, and he didn't disappoint. So, yeah, it's, uh, there's a few headaches that sort of need to be had uh, in a good way. <laughs> but for you, Jeff, um, possibly, well, looking at the Argentinian side, and I agree, I thought the first five, Santiago Carreras, was very, very good. Um, the forward pack, that, that loose forward trio, as you mentioned, um, and that line, that set piece, they'd been doing they'd been doing quite a bit of homework there, um, and they reaped the rewards. Um, so for you, if you look at both the All Blacks and Argentina, who sort of stuck out? Oh, look, I thought it was uh, a great performance from Sam. I, I think you're, you're, you're bang on. I mean, he was actually clearly the standout performer for the All Blacks on the night. Um, because you could almost find in other areas of the game. What's like I say, what's really hard is that there was a you get the sense as a game plan that that particularly when we we've got guys who are great scrummages up front, their impact of the game is significantly different if they don't get to do that, you know. And so we have a starting two starting props who never you know, Lomax and um and De Groot, who never got to go to their their what their first selection criteria is, is going there as scrums. So so for them, it's what else they could do around the park. And like I say, we, we did a lot of really quite good things. I mean, I still think Bowden Barrett's still playing some really nice rugby. Saved the day early defensively. Um, he was the one that put in the the classic Gary Owen back into the middle of the park that bounces right over, you know, you know like I think once again, we, 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 we're talking about margins that are very, very, the, the, it was an eight point margin in the end, but we had this test match in our hands and, and on the back of a couple of mistakes and errors and miscommunication, we just presented to them with that chance. But I I, I wonder, and I'm, I'm interested in what they do this week at halfback. You know, when you talk about, you know exactly what you wanted. You said, oh, we love the speed and um, instinctiveness of Noah Hotham and um, Cortez Ratima. You've talked about that, but you're still not prepared to start one of those guys. At some point, you had to start Aaron Smith. You had to, you had to put him in the middle, and he had to start in the all-black jersey. He didn't become Aaron Smith straight away. And the longer they don't get the opportunity... Um, it's whether or not they're prepared to go with that or do they try and just trust in, in TJ. Um, I, do, I will say this. I do find it tough. You know, and I know these guys are professionals, when, but I, I find it tough when, when players have something else on the horizon. And he's got something else on the horizon. You know, he knows what's happening in the future. 
you know, and, and to try and stay in the here and the now for 100% pity, I'm not, I'm not convinced it's that easy. Jordy Barrett's heading to Leinster. Hardy Savia's going to Moana Pacifica. These guys have got a lot of change happening in their lives in six months' time, five months' time. You know, and I'm just, you know, I, I, I just really like to see our experienced guys, the guys that we've decided that are our leadership, and because you're picking them on leadership, they have to now be our best players through the course of those 80 minutes, you know. Um, and I just, you know, I'd really like to see a lift from them. That would be, that would be for me. And just quickly on Argentina, um, look, I, I just think you can't go past their loose forward trio. Um, Gonzalez, uh, uh, Kramer and Natera. Man, they are ruthless. They are tough. They are physical, big men. Kramer's a beast. He's, he's, he is awesome. You watch him play. Um, he's, he's like a wild man out there in terms of his physicality and relentlessness. Um, they look a bit fitter as well. They look as though they're conditioned to go. And they could, they, you know, um, so for me, they're the ones that were, were, were game changers and actually have been game changers when they've beaten us both times, no, three times actually. It's been their loose forward. So, um, but yeah, I, I just think for me, it's, that's where my concerns are. It's not the guys who are playing well for the All Blacks. It's actually the guys who I expect to be maybe a little bit better. All right, Pity. What changes would you like to see for the second test uh, this Saturday night up there at the Garden of Eden? Um, maybe just the more experience. Um, uh, Spine or uh, back, backbone when they come on, the energizer of bunnies, you know, the ones that can close out a game. Uh, I think that's probably one thing that they'll probably need to consider because that's that's been um, one of our go-to. Oh, our our strength is our, our our bench. Our bench has always come on, uh, lifted the energy of the boys, tried to pick up the the pace of the game, uh, and, and basically get us over the over the line. Um, yeah, just a bit more uh, depth around that area there. And, yeah, like, I guess, like Goldie said, maybe chuck one of the young uh, young halfbacks in there and give them a crack. So, Goldie, the back line, do we see some change? Does Will Jordan start somewhere? Does he start on the wing? Does he start in the 15? Does Bodie move somewhere else? Do, do we start either Atima or Hotham, do what? Well, well, what would you like to see first of all? The hard part for what Perry just talked about, though, is that a lot of the guys that you'd like to put on the bench are some of your starters if you wanted to bring experience coming off. You know, because we actually don't. It's like because um, Samasoni Tokiaho is not available, it's Bell. So you go, well, there's no experience there. So it's like for like. I mean, Asafa's got more experience than him. You know, so 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 you can't change there. I mean, in terms of our in terms of our props, the the, the other options to Mighty Williams, well, he's only played a couple of test matches, you know. So, um, you, you know, uh, I mean, we had offer coming off the bench. Um, yeah, and, and, and to be fair, he was fine. There was nothing nothing wrong with the way that he played. Uh, we don't have any options at lock, um, unless Patrick and but he, I think he's got a calf niggle, so they don't go away very quickly. So it's you know, it's whether or not you start switching guys around. But, but, but at the moment, this. By our standards, this is quite an inexperienced All Black group that's fit and available to select. You know, there's not many options. So, if you're going to make changes, I would make a change at halfback. You know, I just, I just would. I'd be actually happy if TJ came off the bench. You know, it's a role he plays really well. Um, if you want to close out a game, um, you know, I think you're still the Will Jordan one. We, we, if you're going to have a kicking game that's in the air, you got to have guys who can contest for position really well. Um, maybe, maybe Caleb Clark deserves an opportunity. You know, on the left wing, I wouldn't be adverse to that. I wouldn't be adverse to, you know, swapping. And, and I would still stick with Bowden and, and Damien just for one more test match. I'd have Will Jordan on the right and, and Caleb on the left. And, you know, the, the midfield, um, it's a really interesting one. Uh, I think Anton Leonard Brown's a better second 5'8 than he is centre. You know, um, that, that's the, my preferred position with him. Uh, you know, the trouble is, you're throwing everything out with the baby in the bathwater, everything, you know, because you, you you can't put ALB at second five and Proctor. This is a new backline. Then it's pretty much a backline, a completely different backline. And so I don't know if you want to do that. Uh, and saying that though, um, they were really good against Fiji. Proctor played outstandingly well. So did Leonard Brown. You know, so um, I'd like to see change. I really would. Um, uh, 
and, and that to me, particularly on the outsides, if you're going to do this, if you want to contest in the air, I thought Caleb was really, really good. Has been had a really good season. Um, I'd like to see him get the opportunity. And Will Jordan absolutely has to has to start a game. We've got to get him back out there and playing. Is there the danger that, and I don't think Razor will do this, but if there are wholesale changes, pundits will then say Razor's panicking. He's making all sorts of changes. I don't think he will, but if he does make a few tweaks here and there, um, as you say, were, <laughs> Test Match Rugby, is it's a game of inches at times, and the All Blacks weren't that far away from actually coming away with the win uh, down here last weekend. So they... <laughs> They probably don't have to make too many changes, and it's unlikely we're going to see another test match where there's no scrum for the first 60 minutes of the game. So that means that the likes of Lomax and De Groot will yeah. be able to have more of an influence uh, on this test match coming up. Um, so maybe Razor doesn't have to make wholesale changes. I find it hard to believe, though, Perry. We're talking about it, but as basing you know a result around their scrum. Like that's that's never been our way. It's not our way. Like we we we're better than that. You know, I, I I'm just. What would you do it on 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 our side of attack, Pity? What? How would you you know use what we do have, the position we do get? Um, you know, are, are we not playing enough? What's in front of us? Have we gone back to a little bit too much structure? Because I honestly believe that we are not a side that will outstructure the opposition. I don't think there's any um, uh, options in terms of how they, because everything just seems to be the same uh, every time. Like there's no change or there's no deception anywhere um, when it comes to. I mean, if you, for okay. example, if you look at how uh, Ireland's attack against South Africa, they've got these little pockets of their attack that changes the picture and then creates opportunity for them, especially around their pod shape. Uh, and like you know that if we're trying to smash and bash, which which is what we've been been good at, at the past, but in the past, but I think now everyone's onto it. That everyone's actually trying to uh, change the pictures, or they're trying to utilize their strengths and make it e and weaponize that a lot better. Uh, obviously, we've been pretty good with our ca our carry and then clean and then our tips and then running like that and. Um, what the Hurricanes used to have with Geordie was he'd sit behind that pod and punch between the two two runners, you know, and uh, there's none of that. Uh, we seem to be telegraphing that we're going sort of back door, hit to the next next pod, and they just carry, and then we try and outflank them on the edges. But, you know, teams nowadays are doing all the hard work by analysing um, the strengths of ours and then turn, trying to turn that into a weakness, and then... What we're not doing is we're not doing enough to create opportunities from our, our strengths, knowing that they have they are going to be putting a lot of heat on our shape. Uh, how can we change one little thing that they won't won't know or, or they haven't seen us use uh, to get us over the advantage line or to get clean breaks? All right, we've once again we're well over time, so I've got to move this. So we could we could stick with this. The, this picking apart the performance in the first test and, and what we think should happen in the second. But I, th I think we'll leave it there. And although Jeff did say, I can't remember, was it the mid-late 90s where we lost five tests in a row? Um, it's not going to happen again. Well, if we drop this one in Auckland, we've got two yeah. test matches in South Africa after that. And we've seen how they've uh, gone against the Austra against the Wallabies. It's it's not that not that. Yeah, Can yeah. So this this test match, I, I would never have thought I'd say this. What four test matches in, right? This is the record at Eden Park we're talking about here since nineteen ninety four, and and we just conceded thirty eight points, the highest number of points the All Blacks have ever conceded at home. So. You start thinking about all of those things leading into this test match, and if you don't think there's pressure on this week, my man, this is—I don't think we would, he would have anticipated being under this much heat, you know. Um, and he will be uh, this whole this whole team, this whole group, um, because the expectations were actually so very very high, you know. And you talk to anyone, we're not seeing anything different. We're seeing actually we weren't as good as we were last year, you know. Um, and you and 
you know, there's the yeah, but that's about personnel. Well, hold on, we, you, you got the job. You know, that's the it comes with the territory. You know, um, you knew that Richie Moanga was leaving. You knew that there'd be no Sam Whitelock. You knew there'd be no Brody Rotelli. You know, um, you knew all of this. Um, it's your job and responsibility. And I, you know, we, I'm support. Look, I'm supportive of him and this group. And I, you know, these these guys are good guys who are working hard. But this is your black jersey and legacy we're talking about. And and Eden Park is incredibly important to that because if if that if that goes, if that protection of playing there, that winning record for how long? We're thirty years now, right? If that disappears, makes life very difficult in the future because all of a sudden people start believing they can beat the All Blacks anywhere. Right, I, I can't leave it at that. I want kind of I want a wee bit of sunshine before we leave the an analysis of uh, the All Blacks uh, Argentina, and I can tell you that Sam Darry was paying fifty one dollars to be the first try scorer in that first Test match, and he was the best backed player in the anytime try scorer market where he was paying dollars and seventy five cents. So he? he there were plenty of punters who jumped on Sam Derry to score a try in that first session, and they didn't have to wait too long to uh, collect their winning. So well, how um, were the people on Cody Taylor feel? Yeah, well exactly <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Very, um, unfortunate there. Uh, right, Pity. Um uh, Come to the section of the show we call Wainui Whisper. Uh, obviously, you're very close you're to the ground. Bloody, uh, <laughs> there was a traffic jam in Wainui. Was that the whisper? Yeah, was. Is it on the way coming oh, into yeah. uh, to the city? What do you got? What do you got for us in terms of Wainui Whispers? What? Um, obviously, something out of the Lomax household. You've, no, you've... nothing out of the Lomax household. What? But I am going to be uh, involved. Um, with the Lions uh, this week, I will be going into camp. Uh, to I've been been asked to sort of come along from uh, Soaks to um, present the jersey to the to the team, and uh, I'm kind of looking forward to it. After you bet against them uh, last week, Paulie, so I'm expecting Wellington to uh, beat Taranaki uh, after they get. Um, energized after my mean air speech. Yeah. I don't think I'm doing one, I'm just presenting. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, well, we'll know who to blame, uh, after this weekend. If... You can't, hey, don't start because well, you bet against the Lions yeah. last week. Remind Auckland, remind me never to yeah, do that oh, again. Exactly. Don't let me do that again, please. So, well, um, let's have a look at the NPC because the round uh, one is all over. And there are a number of upsets in round one as well. Uh, the Stags uh, in their big derby against Otago uh, getting up. Jeff, uh, it'd be uh, very, very happy. In fact, why don't we go to you now, Jeff, and just get your thoughts on well, um, well, that game? Mixed emotions. Mixed emotions. Well, you know, yeah, mixed emotions. Otago, we're talking about a team I won an NPC title with. Um, <laughs> look, uh, this is a concern if you're Otago. I mean, they're a super rugby squad. I mean, if you look at the team that they sent down to Invercargill, great crowd down there, though. And this rivalry is, look, the Don Stewart Memorial was up for grabs, the uh, Shield, um, and no one's busted that, I don't think, in the last 120-odd years. Um, but it's, it's there's a lot of passion between these two teams, and I, I, I was on both sides of it. Um, and, you know, look, it was, that was huge for South, and it really is. And they've done a really good job of assembling a really competitive side. Uh, you know, they, they haven't got a huge amount of depth, so getting a win first up, but this is more about the disappointment for a target. I know there's a lot of negative stuff today, but, the, but to your point, Southland started off, it was the perfect result for them at home in front of their fans, you know, um, regardless of what happens to the rest of the season, you know. But if you're, if you're a target, you've got to be asking some questions about some of these guys who've played a huge number of Super Rugby games. And this was, it was a Super Rugby background, really made no impact on this, on this game whatsoever. And, uh, you know, you have to give everything to the to the Southland group, and you know I'm stoked for them. I hope they've enjoyed the weekend and uh, they're ready to go again. But that's that was huge. They were they were very very good. Uh, pity um, the Stags, and they usually are at home. They always put up a, a big big effort, and they've just lacked, um, I guess, in seasons gone by, just a wee bit of um, class. Um, to actually finish off a lot of the opportunities. They, they were very, very good against Otago. Now, 
You did mention the Wellington uh, Auckland game where I bet against Wellington. Uh, Wellington were very, very good. I thought their um, halfback uh, was it Preston. Um, we've had a halfback called Preston a few years ago. Um, he looked very, very good. The fullback Peter Larkai. Mm. You know, we mentioned him before the All Black season uh, started as a a fringe player. Well, he's certainly putting his hand up um, and letting Razor know that um, he's probably got the goods. In fact, the loose forward trio for Wellington were very, very good as were the Argent, just well, similar to the Argentinians. I thought they they really, really took it to the Auckland team. Um, if you have a look at that, uh, you, well, you, well, if you're a Wellington supporter, you've got to be fairly happy after that. That's a big, big, to go to Eden Park and knock over Auckland is always a big, big feat. Yeah, I, I think uh, they they got off to a pretty pretty good start. Uh, you know, and, and it sort of uh, helped them sort of build moment, momentum. Um, you know, I, I think this year's uh, possibly a year that they want to uh, make sure that they finish the job this year. They're obviously unfinished business after last year's uh, mishaps. And so this is probably uh, the opportunity to, to get it in the right direction. Uh, in terms of building uh, from what, what they started last year. So, um, plus, you know, uh, Jackson's back, guiding the guiding the troops uh, around the right re- end of the field. And um, you've got bloody Umanga Jensen in the midfield there that uh, I, was, uh, I was a little bit concerned about uh, how he scored that try. I wasn't too sure if he was, uh, his knee was on the ground or, but uh, he pretty much, uh, Caught a uh, scored a pretty uh, nice individual try there up the middle, but um, I think a bit, uh, the biggest one would have been seeing uh, Riley on the on the wing uh, to start with. But uh, you know, I, I guess they're just working slowly to try and improve from uh, a lot of this stuff from last year. Let's have a look at a couple of games coming up in round two, uh, Goldie um, and. I guess, we'll, well, why don't we start with the game where Pity's going to be handing out a few jerseys. Uh, Wellington, Taranaki, and the Bookies have got Wellington very, very short, in, in my opinion, uh, up against a Taranaki side who looked very, very good um, beating Counties Monaco in the first round. The defending champions as well. Um, it looked like they'd been training for quite a long time because their combination seemed to click straight away. They've got a lot of power and speed out wide. I thought their first 5'8", uh, was that Jacob, uh, Jacob was he was very very good controlled uh, things uh, nicely slotted into the back line when he needed to uh, at two dollars and ninety cents. Do you see Taranaki as a wee bit of value there against Wellington? That's a very good question. Um, but Taranaki are a different team when Stephen Petafeta plays for them, um, and that he was driving force of their success at the at back end of the season. He missed quite a bit of time through injury. Um, Jacob's a good footballer, um, but when they had the ability to have Peter Feder out there as well, whether it be a ten or fifteen, it, it just he, he's a, he's a superstar at NPC level, um, Stephen, and, and it's unfortunate he's going to once again he's in no man's land. Um, uh, I'd actually like to see him back playing playing rugby. You know, didn't play a huge amount of Super Rugby. Now he's sitting in the wider group, picked up a little bit of a niggle by the sounds of things as well. Um, but I think in terms of Taranaki. Uh, I'll recognise this is an important game. I'll, I'll be interested in this game a little bit later on in the season. Um, Wellington were good, though. And I'll, I'll put full disclosure, I took Auckland. <laughs> 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 but, that, but, but, but that was on the proviso. I, I, that was early on um, before I realised Plummer was going to be out. You know, Because I think Auckland are going to be a significantly different team when he's playing probably at 10 for them. You know, I think Auckland, all of a sudden, what you talk about, you know, that work that uh, Gavin Bishop does at 10, for Wellington, they the Auckland need that person. They need someone there. Now, Harford's Harford's got a bit of work to go before he's at that level, you know. Um, but that was a that was a heavyweight tussle, which I think if you, you, you took some form out of the first weekend, yep, the good teams you saw the ones that are quite deep. And Taranaki are a team that are deep. Um, Ratamata Vuki Nikim's at fullback, you know, Jacob at at at, um, at first five. They've got some they've got some talent. Um, you know, Naholo on the wings had a really good year. I think though the the Lions, after an inspirational speech from from Pity and the handing oh. out of the jersey, because it's a massive responsibility. Because you don't want to be that guy that you get invited in to hand out the jerseys and then they don't play well. Yeah, 
you know, you don't so, encourage uh, them or like give them energy or yeah. nothing inspirational. Yeah, exactly. I said, what was he talking about, man? Back in the old back in my day, um, <laughs> but, I, but I, I think um, I think Wellington will be too good. I think they'll be too good in that at, at home. Um, uh, are they where are they playing at? Is it at um, at a, Porirua uh, Park? Porirua? Yep. Yeah. All the games are out there this year, eh? Is that right? Uh, I know that the first two are. I'm not too sure uh, if they are playing any games at Sky Stadium. I think so, they might be. I'm not entirely okay. sure. Maybe some of the, maybe the, um, but, the, but this is as big as it gets. But I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Wellington will be. Uh, yes, there's value, but there, there's a reason they're not the favourites. <laughs> there's a reason there's value. The other team is quite strong. Well, let's go to the guy who's going to be right in the middle of it all uh, come Sunday, um, out at Porirua, Wellington. Um, you happy to stay with? The Lions, um, I guess, with the home field advantage. And I, I think the battle was going to be decided uh, at, at the breakdown. And I just think the the Lions, their loose forward trio, just they just look so good. They're so fast. They're strong. Um, they're athletic. Um, but for you, Pity, where do you think the deciding sort of factor comes in? Uh I reckon, because we're going to be there anyway before before the um, game. Uh, Who, your boys? Yeah, Wellington's playing. The, Are they the curtain raiser? Curtain raiser against Silverstream in the final for Wellington Whoa. secondary schools. Wow. And so we'll get a good feel of like what the um, ground's going to be like, the field and uh, the atmosphere. So um, I, I think if they play, because we kind of checked beforehand, it's supposed to be wet. Uh, and so I, I guess the kicking game is going to be probably one of the biggest uh, assets and with uh, Jackson's uh, boot and knowing that ground as well, because he's a, a North horse boy. boy. Yeah. Uh, he knows uh, which side to be uh, punching that ball into which corner. So, yeah, I, I think um, the 10 that's going to drive like Jackson, I reckon if, if they can put it down in the right end of the field and apply a bit more pressure and, uh, Keep Tadanaki down down in their half uh, for the majority of our, I think that's where it's going to be done. Right, another game uh, this weekend. And, well, earlier on, um, the boys were struggling to separate these two teams. There's, there's been a big move there, uh, though. A Tasman, now a dollar forty seven favourite up against Canterbury, who are $2.50, Jeff. Both of these teams are coming off uh, wins in the first round, Canterbury taking uh, care of Northland and uh, Tasman doing the business against Manawatu. Um, you happy with Tasman being such warm favourites against their neighbours? Yeah, I'm just sort of going through the squads and, and looking at, you know, who's got what. And, and uh, no, I, I think this is tight. Like, I, I think this is, this is the one where I actually think there is a little bit of good value. You know, and around Canterbury, um, you know, you go through their lineup and started up against Northland, and you know, it wasn't a Northland are very good as with under. Um, don't underestimate Northland in terms of what they've done. They've they've recruited well. Um, you know, they've got some good players. Um, they're well coached, and, and so Canterbury took a while to get over the top of them. But you know, when you've got a loose forward, Christy Grace and Harmon, um, Canterbury. Uh, you know, you've got uh, McLeod and Enor in the midfield. You've got Fihaki at fullback. I mean. This is once again. This is a super rugby quality sort of side. McAllister is at hooker. Um, Jamie Hannon had a really good year for um, for uh, the Crusaders. So I just I just sort of look at them. Drummond, Poi Hippie, like uh, the good value there. I think this is a lot tighter than that. And I'm interesting wondering where the move came from. So who's who's had a decent crack? You know, is that um, because that that to me is the margins there um, are certainly not that big. I mean, Tas Tasman have got a I really, as they do, and they've done really well, they've got a really solid, um, talented squad. Manawatu, Manawatu are a little bit light, eh? You know, they're just, you know, they, they haven't really got the, the super rugby depth and players that, that you need to be able to compete um, with some of these um, top sides. So, now I, I, I would, would I say it'd be an upset? Um, I don't think it'd be an upset. I, I, I just think this, this, this will be tight. This will be a really close game. So, um, what, are the, what are the odds at the moment? Tasman a dollar forty seven, Canterbury two dollars and fifty cents. Canterbury plus five and a half. Ooh. Ooh. gosh, you're a Canterbury fan. 
Really? Are there any of those nift? Are they still around? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please, please send all complaints to uh, <laughs> Chief Goldie Wilson. <laughs> hey, look. Uh, look okay. <laughs> And I just did everything I get because they can say that about a lot of teams that I support. So, um. yeah, pretty when you look at this game, Tasman. Um, well, I'm sure I'm going to have to go back and check because I thought these two teams were almost a dollar eighty-seven the pair um, when I had a look at this market last night, um, and now a dollar. So I don't know if there's sort of some whispers come through that Canterbury um, may be resting and. We haven't heard yet. We're, we're recording this on a Tuesday morning. We we don't know the squads, but that sort of move would suggest to me that either Tasman are getting an injection of some very, very uh, uh, good experienced players or Canterbury um, may be without one or two key players. But if you have a look at that, um, after the results of the first round, uh, are you happy that Tasman are a $1.47 favourite or you think the value is possibly with Canterbury there at two fifty? Oh, I don't know. I mean, you talked about uh, Drummond, but there's also Christie's uh, running mm. around uh, who, who can also uh, run the team. Uh, Havili's, well, we don't know if he's going to be playing, but Havili's there too. Um, but other, yeah, it's a tough one. I'd, I'd back Tasman, but <laughs> that's because I'm uh, not a massive Canterbury fan. But Well, <laughs> <laughs> like Goldie, no. I, didn't, I didn't say that. I didn't say no, that. You, no, you, you didn't say it like that. But you, I didn't, again, you didn't, I didn't say it like that. that you know. Yeah, you didn't say it like that. No, it's like you've said it before, Pity. Um, Canterbury is like the Canberra of New Zealand. You, know, you just never like going there, travelling there. Um, right. Well, but, yeah, you, can't, can't dive too much into that. But yes. Even though I've got family that live down when there. When they've got their new stadium, you won't be able, you won't wait to get on a plane because that's going to be next level. It's going to be a couple of years' time. It's going to be it's going to be fantastic, you know. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, can't wait. a bit of advantage. I'm sure Canterbury fans can't wait for that new yeah, stadium. Yeah, yeah, they, right. and, they, and let's be honest, they deserve it. <laughs> they can, yeah. After suffering Big through, time. how many years have we been there now? After suffering yeah. through, um, no, they deserve mm. it. Um, right, uh, hunch time. Um, you know, I know that Pity has said yep. no, not doing hunches anymore because why? What did he do? Well, <laughs> nothing, he nothing, said, Goldie. It was nothing, he, nothing. He, it never he, happened. A number of injuries to number nine jerseys towards the uh, beginning of the season, uh, no. players wearing the nine jersey. Um, so that was his hunch that, um, that we would score, that nine, we would score tries nine tries against Fiji, Fiji and, and then, then what happened? Uh, yeah. We get a few injuries uh, in the nine jersey nice against Fiji. Yeah. So um, he's he's cursed the nine jersey. And I think he did it on purpose so that he could just bump up the sort of player ratings and terms <laughs> of that and possibly sneak his way back into the oh, audience. Hell no. <laughs> well, well, I've been watching match fit, so... Um, Obviously, yeah, I'm watching the match too. You, you, so you, I know about the uh, part. You've been putting the work in, and I just wanted to ask you about that. Um, what was it that obstacle course that you uh, guys did last week? The um, we're going through the mud over and uh, under things. How hard was that? Oh, it was pretty, pretty tough when the boys don't listen to the rules. You got to keep the jerry to, cans uh, off the off ground. The ground. Yeah. And then first thing the boys shoved it on the ground. Ah, surely. <laughs> what are you up to, cuz? We got told don't put it on the ground. <laughs> and there was the eldest member of our uh, crew. Uh Bunty just threw it on. I said, oh, didn't see that. But no, it was um yeah, it was pretty tough having to get the jerry can up the top of uh, some of the obstacles and then um not only that, get our team through it. So yeah, it was very reminiscent of the uh, mud run that we you said Goldie should know all oh, of the mud run. Is that on the uh, mud flaps up in um, uh, Manuko or was that one? No, Devonport. 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 The Devonport ones, yeah, at the back of the Navy the Navy base there. Yeah, I, I, I just got to watch those. It was great. I love being a coach for just watching these poor buggers preseason. You know, as they and they they wandered up with their heads down, knowing what's in front of them. Yeah, team building. Yeah, been here before. This sucks. Like literally, and this honestly, <laughs> there better be a good feed on afterwards because I just. <laughs> you know, I wish I, you could drink I, and get. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, was there, was there a Barbie at the end? Did, no, was there any no, sort of reward? Take your protein shake in. Go yeah, recover. Bro. Oh, mate, you'd be lucky wow. you've got a protein shake. What are you on about? What are you on about? Oh. Um, yeah, what's your hunch, Paulie? What do you got? You've got you will have one for us. I'm just I'm well, just trying yeah. to think on the top of my head. I'm just you, you yep. go. Well, it came to me yesterday when those dark, dark clouds came across Wellington, and you could see there was a, a, a clear definition between the sunshine, the clear blue sky, and then the dark clouds as they slowly moved across. So I think it's dark clouds for the All Blacks. I, I think Argentina are going to win at the Garden of Eden. I, I'm, no, so I'm taking Argentina. They were $7 well, last week. They're $4.50 this week. I'm, I'm, I, I'm going I, to take I, did, you, did you not hear? I'm just a, Jeff's, That's like, my hunch. Did you not hear what? Jeff's uh, quoted or about the Eden Park? Black yeah. Jersey Eden Park, the legacy. I, 30 years. I know, 30 years. But the dark clouds came over. What, what am I going to do? They came out. That's my hunch. I don't want it to come true. Yeah, but it's just that you should have just kept that hunch to yourself. Yeah, yeah that, that's... So oh no! Up. I was tempted to hang up then. I was literally just tempted to hang <laughs> oh. up on you. I mean, that, just that, take the headphones off and walk. Yeah, yeah, walk off. That's like a mic drop you've just done there. I mean, you can't, you can't be backing well, against the All Blacks. You, you, you even just hear what he was talking about? The legacy. Oh, I can't believe that Goldie was going to do a Matt Kuchar walk off halfway down the 18th. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has to come back. But I'm usually way off the fairway. I'm always looking. I'm always <laughs> really not. I'm in the bushes, giving, taking a drop. A few fairways over. <laughs> oh well, 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 let's hope that Goldie has a a better hunch. Something I do. Sort of I do. I'm going to go my inner 1993, where Auckland are going to travel south, and it's just a long way for them to go to Dunedin this year, this week take on a target and they're going to take them a little bit too lightly and they're going to be knocked over by the might of the blue and gold i've got a hunch that this is going to be one of the great upsets of the season a target at 330 it should be playing more than that to be fair you guys have been a bit i think you'll boost that by the time the game gets on <laughs> why, you know? why couldn't you come up with an npc game yeah why would you have to right go there. top tier you know I, yeah i've got a I hunch yeah, yeah. Under, under the, the roof. roof. Under oh, the roof. Yeah. As long as Auckland don't give Harry Plummer back. That's I'll just say oh, that. That, that was the yeah. All Blacks <laughs> don't give Harry Plummer back. Then I got a I got a good hunch that a Targa, Targa are going to come back. Targa are going to take on Auckland. What are they? What's the name of the Auckland? It says, what are they name? The the mascot. I don't know. I, I heard Pod call the Elephant Blues on the, on the weekend. Eh? Hey, no, 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 no. They've got a. I'm going to look this up because it's. Uh, Who are they gone? No, their nickname. No, their nickname. What's it called? It's it's something random. Oh, it, oh, I know. I hit, I got to look this up because I uh, I couldn't believe it. Are you talking about like that? We've got the Wellington Lions. Lions, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we got the Auckland. What have we got? Oh, someone said to me during the week. <laughs> honestly, honestly, it was bizarre. Honestly, look it up because I, I, it didn't make any sense. Okay, Auckland rugby mascot is the flying elephant. Is it? That's that's what I've just found out here. The flying elephant. Does that make sense? Well, I think I think you might be right because I got it sent through to me the the other day. If that's true, really, the flying elephant. Here we go. Auckland Rugby Union supporters, flying elephant. Wow. I've, I've never heard of that before. Uh, neither. No, I haven't. I'm going to dive into this whole thing too. Right. We're going well uh, over. Uh, the Razorbacks, I think we're the Razorbacks at Targo, so we're all over elephants. Don't worry about that. Anyway. Razorbacks, but oh, oh, Otago no, was no, what about the stags? Are you we've got a foot in both camps, surely? Yeah, absolutely. I've got a foot in both camps. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. 
The Stags got the Hawks Bay this week, the Magpies. Shield challenge? Yes. Ooh. Ooh. Well, they may, let's have a let's have a little bow, Pete. But Hawks Bay a dollar eleven, Southland five seventy five. Um, so Southland are uh, fifteen and a half point underdogs. I, I could tell you a story about that when they held the. I was playing coach in North Harbour, and we went down for a shield challenge in the Macaga when they held it. Right, Southland held. It. Remember they had that tenure down there, Jamie McIntosh and Rutledge, yep. and literally they played eleven forwards, and you know they, they I think they had nine. On the, nine on the field at one point. But anyway, we were shield challenge down there. And the day before the game, we we're doing the goal kicking. You know, I was standing behind the post, kicking it back. And I said, there's not something not right here. I was standing, and the balls, as I was behind the post, the balls kept flying over the back. And I looked and the guys were standing on the 15 meter line. There's something not right here. The field was 57 meters Short. wide. <laughs> he, honestly, I would have had to put my wing, uh, enough to uh, to a devaki, in the first row of the stands to get outside their team. Like the, the, the field was that narrow, like they, they reduced it right down to the bare minimum. And you wonder why you couldn't get around them. If you wanted to win, you had to go through them. We lost on full time. Got uh, there was a dirty obstruction on halfway, and they they went fifty meters to beat us. Um, but yeah, I remember at the time I got this filthy. So I, I measure every pitch I go to now, every single one. <laughs> you know what he did? North yeah. Harbour. I went back to North Harbour, and I said, "You do realise that our defence is no good. Any chance you'd?" <laughs> Narrow the field up. Was, that, field was, that field was 70 metres wide. I said, no wonder we can't defend. I said, if I could just space everywhere. I said, seriously. I said, could you reduce it? Oh, no, it wouldn't look right in the size of the stadium. I said, it doesn't look right on the scoreboard either when we're getting humped by 30 points. <laughs> what do you do? Do you, do you go to Nisbo, hold this end of the tape measure and walk it across the field? <laughs> I just, I just, str people look at me, what are you striding it out for? I've got the perfect one meter step, and I can tell you for it. And I, I went like this because actually the uh, World Cup fields were only 97 meters long at the World Cup last year. Oh, last year? Yep. Because they're football stadiums and not football stadiums. And to be able to put the minimum amount in the dead ball area, they had to reduce the gap between the, uh, the 22 and the 15 meter line. So they're all about only. 47 metres long. Each half was only 47 metres long. Oh, so, so they didn't narrow the end goal, or they no. narrowed the end goal to the minimum uh, yeah. allowable amount, and then they just shortened the, the field, the, the actual playing field. The actually playing field. So you know some of those massive punts, and you know that's pretty, if a, if a field, if one might have been 94 metres long. So six metres is quite a lot. And so you'd be inside your 22, and it would be landing, you know, six metres is quite a bit. All of a sudden, you're, you're down in there, they're 22. So... I, I, I reckon it was one of the games against the All Blacks. I said, how in the world are the, the ball travelling this far? And that's that's what it was. There you go. There's oh, actually no sweet. exact size you have to have. There's a range. And Southland held the shield on the base of it for about two years. Well, no wonder at that fate. That would favour the South Africans. You're having a field a wee bit shorter. because oh, Not right uh, now. Not right now. <laughs> no. no. Well, you say that. What? Sharks. We used to go there. Theirs was about three or four meters short. Yeah. Especially when we played them because they knew that we liked to throw the ball around. And so they compressed it. So yeah, compressed the field. Hey, it's just <laughs> like you go to India. You're not playing on a you're not playing on a green seamer in Indian cricket, are you? She's too This is very sweat. much like cricket. This is <laughs> no, exactly. it's, it's much exactly. like cricket. Exactly. <laughs> The home team is you just don't get home advantage with the crowd. You get it with the actual field and the and everything. The, yep. That's just like we'll get a home field advantage at Eden Park, Pauline, yes. in your hunch. Right. Gone. Right. 70 meters wide, 100 exactly. meters long. <laughs> I, Let's I go. Be more, more happier with my hunch going down this week. Um, so, well, let's get to a bit of betting then. Um, and you've got $100 to spend once again. Let's have a look back because a surly. Uh, isn't here this week because he tipped out North Harbour to everybody, all in sundry, and um, it tripped up mo most of our multis as well. Uh, if I have a look here, what well, pity uh, had Taranaki to win, Wellington to win, Bay of Plenty to win, and North Harbour to win. Oh, yeah, the only one that missed out the old Harbour Heat chat. So unfortunately, went down there. A surly. Uh, also had a number of uh, multis. Most of them included Harbour. Unfortunately, that tripped him up, uh, and it was the same with me. In fact, 
I took Tasman to win into Otago to win. I thought that was a that was the certainty of the of the round. What about your Auckland one? Yeah, all right, I'll get to that. Yeah, yeah, that one. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> uh, we're going to have a, another little go this week. Uh, who who wants to start, Jeff? Yep, uh, I've gone three way, um, and I've gone on. Um, I think the All Blacks are going to bounce back completely against what you're saying, and they're going to win 13 plus. I expect them to win this and dominate it at $1. seventy-two. South Africa are going to monster Australia and Perth. There'll be more South Africans in the span stands than uh, there will be Australian fans. Uh, it'll be that'll be a great atmosphere though. That's an outstanding place to go and play. Uh, they're at a buck seventy-five. And then after our discussion and the fact that I now know that Pretty Whippu is handing out the jerseys and inspiring, uh, and they will watch some wonderful. Um, work in the curtain raiser uh, as well, some entertaining footy. Uh, I got it then to win head to head. So four twelve that multi's up to. So um, hundred bucks at that. Hundred bucks four dollars twelve. So looking for four hundred twelve dollars from a hundred. There you go. Bang, that, that was easy. Pity. I'm still trying to figure it out. Okay, I'll go. Um, I'm going fairly simple. Uh, this week, I was really impressed with the way Bay of Plenty went about their business. I know they've got what was it three games in the space of uh, well seven or eight days, um, but I think they can continue on that winning way. So I'm going to take them just head to head against Counties Manuko uh, Wednesday night, uh, and then I'm also I'm staying away from the Wellington Taranaki game. I don't want to have any influence on that whatsoever. <laughs> so I'm going to. St- <laughs> I don't want to be out, come back next week and pity starts blaming me for something. Um, but I also, I think, I, I was going to take Tasman. They've just come in just a wee bit short. I don't know what's happening in that game. So I, I, I've put a line through it. They were, Tasman were in my multi, but I've had to adjust it after that move. I just, something's, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but I'm happy to go with Jeff and take Otago plus the points there, plus nine and a half cool. against all. I, I think we'll have an improved performance there from Otago. Um, and or, as you say, Auckland traveling down there under the roof, as long as Plummer's not around, um, I think Otago can keep that. They'll be hurt after that loss to Southland last week. Um, and, and I expect to see an improved performance. So Otago plus nine and a half. Uh, just into Bay Plenty, the whole hundred on there. Easy peasy done. Easy peasy, you reckon? Well, so you haven't been prepared to put Wellington in and and upset anybody, but prepared to say your hunch that the All Blacks are going to lose. So yeah. next week, if and you if haven't even put your money, who, in your guess product. who's for copping it? <laughs> You're copying. <laughs> so, so, some of your logic there, my friend, is not one hundred percent right. <laughs> well, well, hunches. <laughs> tend to not be so logical, unfortunately. <laughs> not mine, anyway. Why do you think I gave up after my oh, one hunch? Well, you're going to give. You're yeah. going to have another hunch before the season's over. Oh, you're going to find one. I have to figure it out then. All right. I'll have uh, well, my multi. I'll do a multi. But first, I'll put 25 on Otago. Uh, 12 and under to beat uh, Auckland. 12 and under. What are they paying there? They are... Otago, four dollars and fifty cents, and then for my multi, I'll take Tunnies, Marcos, Wellington, and Waikato uh, for uh, fifty dollars, and then I'm going to put twenty five dollars on Jordy Barrett to score a try. Where's Waikato? I can't even see them at the moment. At the bottom. Oh yeah, we haven't got the odds out for that yet. That's all right. I'll slot them in once uh, the boys get that market up. Um, I was about to say, so you got special odds there because I couldn't find them either. No, no, there's no odds. I was just, I was looking yeah. for the odds. And nothing. And that's, that's exactly how you're happen. supposed to gamble. Is you're not supposed to look at the odds. You're just supposed to be the yeah. going to win. Just go blind with it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, righty ho. Let's have a look at the promotions we've got on this uh, week. Of course, we've got the Overwall Mega Multi. Um, get up to fifty dollars bonus cash back. Uh, one per day. That's over the um, rugby championship, the NBC, um, NRL. You can flick in there as well. So plenty of opportunities there. Um, the boys haven't put one out for the All Black Test yet, but um, uh, keep an eye out for that. In fact, make sure you go back to the promotions page of uh, the TAB website 
um, on Thursday or Friday just to check out what promotions we're putting out there. Uh, Jeff, thanks very much for joining us on short notice. Uh, sorry that Pity was late once again. Um, <laughs> <you're>, uh, <laughs> How long is this podcast supposed to be? 45 minutes. 45 minutes. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> oh, good to know. Good to know. <laughs> Yeah. I'll clear my Don't schedule worry. next time. I'll clear my schedule. <laughs> uh, you'll uh, you'll be at Eden Park, no doubt, this Saturday night, uh, calling yeah. the game. Yeah, can't wait, can't wait. I really, you know, like it, it's it was sort of funny for three weeks, sort of not having the All Blacks playing, you know, and uh, we had something else to watch. And and the Olympics has been great, been fantastic. What a what a, a great event and time for New Zealand sport. But um, yeah, bring on Eden Park and. I'm just hoping that we get a bit of an uplift. I know that they're a bit short on ticket sales again. Um, and, and I think now, though, they sort of, on Sunday, they saw a bit of a ramp where people going, well, this has all of a sudden got a whole lot of different meaning now. Yep. You know, we need to be exactly. there and we need to back the All Blacks. So I, I'm, you know, I'm expecting um, it to be a different atmosphere maybe than it, does, that it was in Wellington, you know. Uh, so let's bring that on. Yeah, this is now a pivotal test match um, yeah. for the All Black. There's a lot riding on this. So I hope uh, the punters do uh, get down to Eden Park on Saturday night and um, give the boys all the support that they need. Uh, pretty, oh, what about the Westlake? Um, your season all over now, uh, Jeff? No, semi-finals this weekend. Uh, we've, we've we've ended up top of the table to finish with, but we've got a, um, a tough, tough match up with Northcote. Uh, Northcote is actually a composite team, which is quite cool. They've Three schools that Northcote, uh, Glenfield, and um, Birkenhead high schools all combined to make a team, which is great. Otherwise, a couple of those schools wouldn't have a first, you know, haven't got enough for a first fifteen. Or, so they're playing, playing together and playing the second. So that'll be a good, uh, good matchup. Should be good. Nice, uh, Petty. Uh, obviously, you got the curtain raiser on Sunday before the uh, Wellington Taranaki game mm -hmm. um, up against was it uh, St Pat's Silverstream? Yeah, and that's the final. Yes. Wow. It's the first time the boys have uh, been to the to the big dance uh, in a decade, I would say. Awesome. It's been sort of uh, Scots and, and um, Silverstream and St. Pat's have had their, their chances. But, yeah, it's a good opportunity for these boys to uh, grow from what uh, what we've said so far has been an outstanding season for them and just need sort of uh, to finish the job this weekend. You know, obviously we won't overdo things, even though... I made them do uh, hill uh, sprints for breakfast yesterday uh, after well, our review. Uh, uh, is this is this you just letting all our, your frustrations out on your poor, yeah, poor kids? That's is exactly. that what it is? Man, it's, they're not getting any fitter. I learned learn from uh, the oh, best. This guy here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, get on the line, mate. <laughs> no, nah, we've yeah. just sort of felt that uh, we don't want to change anything, try and keep it. Yeah. Our breakfast is the same, so yeah, the boys yeah. ticking the boxes. So, but a breakfast was uh, hill, hill sprints. Well, well, the boys are lucky we don't have any sort of mud flaps down uh, around the Wellington region, <laughs> exactly. Right. They've got a thing called a southerly or a northerly, that's what they've got. Yeah, run into it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> although the wind just hasn't really outside of yesterday, the wind really hasn't been around that much over the last couple of weeks down here. So Anyway, mm. uh, thanks oh, to Jeff oh, sorry, for joining I us. There we go. Thanks to Jeff Goldie Wilson for joining us here Where's on the Picking Up Podcast. Thanks to Pity for also being here once again. And uh, hopefully, we get Surly back next week and he can tell oh, us why. Thanks very much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> not a great chance here. Yeah. Oh, thanks for coming, Dobby. I'm not, not sad. <laughs> Jeff isn't available all the time. He's, he's a very busy <laughs> man. So. Well, hopefully he'll have... just said he'll clear his schedule <laughs> for the hour, hour and a half long quarter. Well, we have to clear it because we never know what time you're going to get oh, in yeah. anyway. There we go. Anyway, thanks for joining us on the uh, Pick and Go Peace, podcast. Uh, all, the, all the best of the All Blacks. Um, and we'll be back next week with another episode of the Pick and Go.